Hello everybody, welcome to Level Pixel Level. Today I just want to share with you an orthographic camera add-on that I wrote. Uh, if you just want to get the add-on, you can head over to my Gumroad account and download it for free. Lately for a bunch of clients, I've been building isometric 2D game art in Blender, where I'll actually build the objects in 3D in Blender, and then render off a 2D image to be placed into a game engine, and it's usually in this orthographic art style. To do this, we need an orthographic camera. So I'm just gonna add a camera and I'm just gonna move it over here and I'll rotate it on the X by 45 and I'll just go to camera view. The default camera is a perspective camera. So it has a field of view with a lens and acts more like a traditional camera. To flip it to an orthographic camera, you come to the camera options here and you flip it from perspective to orthographic. Now this has no perspective to it and it's a really nice orthographic shape if you're doing any isometric games. I can adjust the orthographic scale here. The problem is, is that there's no orthographic scale connected to the image size, which is the resolution. So say I make this 256, nothing has changed here. Meaning that every time I want to render something bigger, I have to adjust the orthographic scale and the resolution. And I don't like to guess at this stuff. I don't like to eyeball and think that I have the right resolution. I wanted these two things connected together. So that's why I built this add-on. So I'll go to my preferences. I'll go to install and I'll just install the add-on. So I'll just turn it on here and I'll close my preferences. So I'll go to add and under camera, there's add orthographic camera. This will add this new camera to your scene. And I'm just going to put my resolution back to 2048 and I'll show you how this works. So under the properties, I have added a dial here called set initial ortho scale. This is something that you said at the beginning and I'll just show you where this is connected. I'm just going to put a default cube in. It's based on the camera being at default of a value of one at 2048. Usually for a character, I like to do 256 or 512 or something like that. So I'll set it to 256 by 256. And then I'll set this scale here where I'll just scale up this resolution. And this is automatically dialing in my orthographic camera scale. Now I only set this once per project. So now that it's at 7.813, I'll leave it alone, never touch it again. Now I can render off this character here and I have this little character sprite and I can save that off. I'll move over now to the lamp here and I'll adjust the resolution to fit the lamp into the frame. And as I'm adjusting the resolution, the orthographic camera scale is adjusting with it. So I'm updating this automatically uh, to compensate for the new image size. And I'll usually use my location X, Y, and Z here to just fit that into the frame. And I'll just render that off. There's my lamp. I'll save that off. And I'll do the same for the tree over here too. And I'll render that. And I'll just do this house over here too. It's going to be a much bigger image, so I'll dial in my resolution. I'll just do the width first, and I'll do the height. And again, it's automatically updating my orthographic scale as I do this, so I don't have to worry if things look correct with the resolution or not. Okay, so that's looking good there, and I'll render that. And I'll just save that off as well too. So I'll do one with the entire scene as well, and I'll just show you how this is going to work in Photoshop. Okay, so I'm in Photoshop, and I'll bring in the entire scene here. So this is all of the pieces rendered off as one scene, and I like the way this scale is working here. So I like the scale of this. Now I could have just brought this all into Photoshop and I could have done crop and crop each one of these, saved off an individual image and then done that for every single one. This is fine on a small project if I just had three props, but some games have hundreds of props to them. So it takes a very long time to actually cut those up. And if you have animation as well, like if this character was running or walking, you wouldn't want it in the same file as these other characters, but you'd want to render it at the same scale. So I'll bring in my single character sprite and you can see how this is working. And I'll bring in my lamp and it's the perfect scale to what I originally rendered as my full set. So it's more about an ease of workflow so that I can maintain my scale through my work. So all these render at the perfect scale as I go forward. So it's really easy to work in multiple files. You can work with multiple artists using the same camera and you can know that you're all rendering off at the same scale consistently. One last thing is this also works with an isometric camera as well. So if I put these Z axes here at 45 degrees, and I have sort of this isometric frame here. So I'll do the house first where I'll just scale the resolution to match the 
dimensions of that house. I'll just move these out of the way. I'll just render that. I'll just save that image. I'll do the character as well now too. So I'll just hide the house. I should be able to get away with 256 here as well too. Just move my camera back into position. And I'll just render that. I'll just save that image. So again, when I bring these two pieces back into Photoshop, they are at the correct scale as they were in Blender because that orthographic scale is tied to the resolution. So it works in both a orthographic 2D front view sort of RPG style game and also an isometric uh, three quarter 45 degree Z axis game as well too. Anyway, let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. Big thank you to my patrons for supporting this video. Uh, it's because of them that I can continue to make these. Head over there if you want to see some exclusive content with my workflows, how I build things, and some behind the scenes videos as well too. Talk to you next time. Bye-bye. <music>